What's up everybody, it's Sparrow with a gun here from Sleepless Nights with another episode on Space Engineer's Inspiration series. We're starting things off today with the Moby Dick 2. Now, this was a build that has been um, recommended to me by the builder and a viewer on my Discord channel and such. And I've had a fairly lengthy conversation, I think, uh, at least enough to get a feel for um, some of the intricates parts of the ship, because this is actually a really functional type ship to me in terms of it has a lot of applications, a lot of moving parts that I think is really cool. Um, but essentially, the main purpose of this build is to kind of act as a mothership slash creation uh, factory type ship, uh, which is pretty cool. As you can kind of see, there's a whole lot of pistons here in the, in the, in the uh, I don't know, fuselage, I guess, area. Uh, there's also quite a few welders up here, so it there is another component to this build, and that's uh, the large grid printer. I forget the name of it, but there is a link in the description for the second piece of it. It's more of a station type thing where you can load up a blueprint, um, and then this part back here is what I believe actually ends up kind of building, or this is the blueprint. Yeah, because it's got the projector, and the large grid printer is kind of the welder section of, of the thing. Um, I don't know that I'll show that part off, but you can check out the uh, video that the builder made, uh, and it showcases that functionality, but it, it's uh, also kind of a similar concept to uh, the small grid one here, which that one I will try and show, I, th I think. Uh, the only thing that I'm not sure about is... Um, the blueprints that I may need to load in or something like that. I don't know exactly how that will work, but you can see we've got a small ship printer start, reverse rotation, uh, start, stop rotation, and printer stop. So this kind of controls the printer from a uh, manual level. I do really like the uh, the use of the neon light thing. These are becoming, they're quickly becoming one of my new favorite blocks. Um, just because they're kind of cool and they kind of look out of the way even if they have a similar collision box and stuff as regular lights they just look more tucked away kind of thing we also have like a docking pad here for um fighters shuttles whatnot um i'm actually going to do this a little bit out of order also uh on a side note the walkways are actually color coded so red is free access Blue is engineering, and yellow is caution, I believe. Um, so that's an interesting point to take note of. But I'm probably going to do this a little bit different, where I will end up doing um, kind of the overview of the ship and the flight and all that kind of stuff first, and then we'll probably take a look at the printing, just because I don't want to have um, some of the ships that are going to get printed and stuff floating around or attached while we're trying to test the maneuverability and whatnot, but one thing I really like about this ship is, uh, in terms of appeal and, and, and look, is the, A, I do like the rustic kind of beat up type of look it's got going on. It kind of makes it feel like a an industrial shipyard kind of vessel, which is kind of its purpose. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, the other is the openness that I, I normally am not a fan of that because I think from a survival standpoint, I would want to have things as, as airtight as possible so that you don't have to walk around using oxygen. Um, it also has a safe zone uh, generator as well, just FYI. Those aren't exactly common because of how expensive the, uh, the safe zone chips are to make. And we've got a nice clearly labeled um, floor plan here as well. So we got landing pad 2, medical room, cockpit, uh, crew quarters, small ship printing deck. So I'm guessing we're on the second floor then. Uh, landing pad 1, large grid printer and subsystems, and boarding gate. So we totally bypassed the boarding gate apparently. <laughs> um, ah, see there it is. I like the labeling, it makes things so easy. Um, but yeah, I, I normally am not the biggest fan of the open, uh, not sealed type ship designs, but I think it actually works for this in in this particular build. I think it's um, it meshes well with the overall vibe of that gritty industrial, we're just here to build kind of uh, look that it's got going on. Oh, I really like this too. I've seen this in a couple of builds now. Um, the 
putting the crates vertical so that you get a little more like it's not quite laying straight type of look. I think that's kind of cool. Um, so let's go ahead. Oh, this is just this. Oh, this is neat. Okay, this is cool. It's just a store for if you docked on the ship. You could just visit the store and go back to your ship without uh, having to enter the main facilities of the of the ship. That's pretty cool. Um, wrong button. I meant to hit that one. Okay, so we've got a medical area here and a store. So it is kind of interesting because it's kind of set up like a hub, essentially, like... Uh, yeah, like that. It's it's like this is just a medical bay and stuff. We're not really into um, any kind of like crew quarter interior type things because you're just around the docking bays and the landing pads and all that kind of stuff. So I kind of really like that of how it's set up. It feels really cool, especially like you've got this contrast of like the wood floor and then kind of the grungy metal. It's like we're kind of keeping up with it as best we can type of thing. It's really neat. I like the overall vibe of the of the ship. It definitely feels like a service vehicle type of thing though where it's like there's facilities for you to use if you dock with it while you wait for your ship to be repaired and stuff like that. It doesn't feel nearly as um what's the word I'm looking for? Uh it doesn't feel quite as uh homey or luxurious as some of the builds we've looked at in in recent episodes and stuff it feels more uh, like a service vehicle which I think is pretty cool because you don't see it too often that way um, now I did mention crew quarters that could have been considered the crew quarters because I think there was bunks and stuff there um, welcome on board so this is the boarding gate okay so there's the the um, connector in the merge block and you've got the controls for all that. Cool. Here's more pistons. The pistons extension is crazy. If you watch the um, the commercial that was essentially uh, made by the builder for the build, uh, it, it's really crazy how far those pistons can extend. It's really pretty cool. But again, it's designed to essentially build a large grid ship off of the back, like a, another... Um, I don't know if it would go as far as capital vessel, but it does go pretty, pretty far in terms of the scale of what you can build with it. It's pretty nuts. Um, so I'm not seeing really any much more of an interior, so I guess the, the cockpit is kind of the bridge. So I guess we're going to uh, look at that next. Now we've got turret controls, cameras um, for the docks, for the front, the rear. Antennas, laser antennas, beacon, a bunch of laser, laser antennas. What is this? Pace coordinates. Pace coordinates. Connect coordinates. Ooh, okay. So these must be involved in some of the um, construction, maybe? Timer block, printer, ship, stop and start, uh, rotors, projector one, two, three, and four, and then projector for large blocks. That's interesting because it says small ship printer projector for large blocks. That's an interesting thing for me that I don't quite understand exactly. Merge group, dock left. Um, okay, so that's all your docking controls. Got it. We've got jump drives. Uh, remote control. Interesting. I didn't expect it to have a remote control. Um, now, again, you'll notice that we don't see, other than this block, which I'm not really sure what it's for, we don't see anything for the large grid printer. Um, and if my understanding is correct, that's because it does require the large grid um, printer block thing. I may include that just as a brief um, explanation, but um, I'm, I'm not sure about that yet. I'm focused mainly on the ship as that is kind of an add-on type thing to get it to reach its full functionality, but it is the, the full way it's intended, so. Um, in terms of flight, so acceleration is not terrible. Again, you're dealing with bigger, heftier ships, so can't expect them to turn on a dime or anything. Turning is really sluggish, so that's something to keep in mind, but again, you're talking about a mobile factory, not some kind of fighter and stuff like that, so it's sort of uh, to be expected in my opinion. Um, so there's that, but it, it accelerates and, and slows down pretty 
pretty easily. Now, the, the one thing I'm not entirely sure about is how do we connect the projectors with the blueprints that we want. That part I'm not sure about, especially when uh, these are actually grayed out, though they are off. I turn them on. Okay, now we have access to it. But they already have a blueprint loaded, it looks like. So we're just going to turn these on and see what we can make happen. Um, I'm going to turn this on. I'm not sure what it's for. But I'm just going to turn it on anyway, because we might need it. All right. Um, now this part I'm actually going to do a little bit differently. I want to do this down here. Um, mainly just so I have a decent look at what's going on. So we don't need to mess with the rotation right now. Let's just hit start printing and see what we can make happen. Now it is on a timer block. Okay. So all these pistons extend up. I'm actually curious about this. Oh, okay, I see. So this extends outward. And we've got a projector on it with a rotor, a small grid, and four projectors, and then a block. I'm guessing that's going to be your... Wow, look at that! That is so cool. That is so cool! All right. And then that one, part of the per... So I'm a little confused by how some of this works. I think the projectors are staggered in a sequence where where one projector stops, the next one is set with an offset to go further, but it can't do that until the first one gets built up enough that it's set up. I think that's what's going on. Um, I will admit I don't know enough about pistons and stuff to understand exactly what the bobbing is for of, of the welders, other than maybe like that to get a little lower, because there's going to be spots where it can't um, get any lower so it has to move down or something. That's the theory, but this is really cool. Just I, don't, I won't pretend to know exactly how all of it works, because this is a little more advanced than I'm uh, comfortable with knowing how it works. I, I've never really done stuff like this before, doing ship printing and stuff like that, but man, is that not, is that not cool. That is so neat. And you end up with, uh, what, four or five different little ships? One, uh, counting by wheels, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, I think. So six ships. That's pretty nuts. I think that's really cool. That is crazy. Oh, and then it rotates again so it can do all the stuff that it's missing. That's a really neat concept. I love it. And um, I may not show the large grid just in the interest of time, because it is really cool, but again, I recommend you check out the uh, the video on the... On the um, by the actual builder because it shows it in more. But it does stuff like this where the uh, the pistons extend outward and everything and it kind of just drags along behind and you can actually see the ships being built like this and it's really cool and it's, it's amazing in terms of um, the scale that it's done at. That it's, it's like we've seen little concepts and things but the scale that it's done at is, is incredible. Um, but yeah, this is really neat. And then I'm assuming... I'm assuming you would... Okay, that almost looks like it's all one block. Maybe this... Okay, so that connector's not doing anything. So I'm guessing maybe this connector you would break. And that would separate it. Maybe all the yellow blocks? The little yellow segments there is probably what's holding these together kind of thing. Like, if I broke that one, would it separate that ship kind of thing? That's really interesting how all that's done. That is super cool. But yeah, I mean, and it's also a lot of different things. Like, this one looks like a little welder ship, uh, but this one is more like a transport with batteries and stuff on it. So it's, this one's got a gun on it. So it's like you're making a whole bunch of different little vehicles. That's really cool. I'm, I'm really liking that concept. I think uh, that's a good example of some of the crazy places you can take <laughs> this kind of stuff. Now, one thing I'm curious about is if I hit 
stop. I wonder... I, there's no grinders or anything to, like, disconnect this stuff, so I'm guessing it just stops. Let's find out. Before we wrap this up, let's find out. Um, and that's where also you got the rotation in case you saw blocks that were not quite getting finished or something. You could rotate it a certain way. Blah, blah, blah. But let's see what happens when we hit stop. So all the pistons are retracting. Or they're supposed to be? These two did not end up retracting yet. Almost looks like they're stuck. That may have been... Right, we're gonna try something. That may have been because of uh, the happening that it was ro where it was rotating at. It may have gotten stuck. I'm not sure. I may have broke it, but that's kind of par for the course for me. Yeah, it's trying to rotate, and I think I got it stuck. <laughs> now those, now those are working, and the other ones won't. <laughs> that's funny. Okay. <laughs> I've totally broken something. All right, that's par for the course for me. We're gonna wrap this one up here since I've already broke it. Um, but yeah, really cool idea. I highly encourage you to check it out for yourselves further, and definitely to play around with the large grid uh, builder. Um, I, I really wanted to show that, but in the interest of time and setup and all that kind of stuff, I figured it was enough to show you guys how cool this ship was, and then let you guys play around with the, uh, the large grid one yourself. So I highly encourage you to do so, and with that we're going to wrap this one up, let's move on to the next one. Okay, now this one is going to be a little weird. I've never actually featured a planet on this series before, um, so this is a bit of a first, but this was just too cool of an idea for me to let it go unnoticed. Um, so this is Terralis. I think I'm saying that right, or Terralis, or Terralis, or I don't know. Anyway, um, this is a planetary prototype. I, I say that very specifically because anytime I see something with prototype or work in progress, I, I do try and make sure I let everybody know that so that uh, you know that it's not finished or anything like it's a version one. But what's cool about this, you may have already detected the grid look kind of thing of almost a Cybertron or Tron or blah blah blah, but it's a city type planet. And I am in spectator mode just so that we can move around um, at greater distances and things a lot easier, but I mean, check this out! This is super cool! Now, um, the one really intriguing part to me is, as I saw the screenshots of this, and I instantly was like, whoa, this is really, this is really crazy, this must have taken a ton of work, and it, no, no, uh, discounting on the builder's part, I'm sure it did take a ton of work. But one thing I found intriguing was I was initially hesitant to uh, show this because I was like, man, this is gonna just wreck my system, right? Look at all the buildings. And I'm sure you've all figured out by now <laughs> there are no buildings. This was all done in voxels. So it's all terrain editing using some of the more techie based uh, skins, essentially, and textures to make this kind of cyber skyscraper, uh, you know, metropolitan city type thing, like a Coruscant type type thing. And that was fascinating to me because it keeps it a little bit lighter on your system to where it's not, you, I mean, granted, I, I don't have a terrible rig by any stretch, but at the same time, you can tell that I'm not really getting a ton of frame rate issues, and we've seen city builds on the Inspiration series that have caused more frame rate issues than this. And it's essentially because it doesn't see it any different as the Earth planet or anything else, it's just voxels with textures and whatnot. And the idea of that was insane to me, like, that's super cool! So, and I mean, we've obviously got, like, roads and other things, so it's, it's... And to, to be fair to the builder, I have no idea how, A, this was done, and B, how long it had to have taken. Now, the only saving grace would if th is if this was somehow done through a form of algorithm, then maybe... But if this was done by hand or something, good lord, this had to have taken forever 
to do this by hand. I, I have to believe that it was some kind of algorithm or or world editing tool or something. There is, I just can't wrap my head around somebody actually taking the time to do all this by hand. That would be insane. I mean, if so, man, credit to devotion right there, but I, I have to feel like there had to have been uh, a faster way of doing that. But the whole planet is essentially like that. Um, and I really think it's cool that when you pan out, uh, the, the curves in the road kind of took me by surprise because I was kind of like, you know, usually tech type, uh, city planet type things, you get more of a straight grid kind of road. Uh, but then when you pan back out, it kind of gives it that Coruscant look where you've got these circular, you know, like, uh, central points type of thing and stuff like that. And I thought that was pretty, like this, something like this, you got this ring around the the city type of thing which makes it kind of a focal point but man i've never done a planet on the inspiration series but i just could not pass this one up this was one of those if you're looking for inspiration and creativity look no further kind of thing because this is definitely taking a tool that i don't think, i don't think most people look at it as uh being able to be used in such a way but man alive this is super cool anyways um, being that it is a planet, there isn't much, much more to really pick apart. It's kind of a lot more of this, but I highly encourage you guys to check it out. Um, there's a lot to this that I think is really, really cool. And uh, I think that's going to do it for this one, so let's move on to the next one. Okay, so last but not least, we have the ETV-3 Cavalier. This is a pretty unassuming ship at first glance, but it actually has some really cool... Um, mechanisms and stuff in it that I think are really neat and I wanted to show off. Not least among them is these sort of kind of uh, hybrid take on VTOL thrusters um, in that you have a couple of main downward thrusters but then there's also these hinge based ones which as you can tell have these merge blocks and hinges and stuff like that um, and can lock in on either forward and backward or both being set to downward to increase vertical thrust which I thought was a really neat idea particularly in stuff like if you were transitioning out of an atmosphere of a planet or something you may need more vertical thrust but then once you're out in space you may need more boost in a forward reverse direction so I think that's pretty cool and it's always a concept um, that I've wished I had implemented in some of my ships and stuff to conserve uh, resources of building a whole bunch of thrusters is being able to repurpose them with different directions so I think that's really cool. Um, I also noticed these uh, custom type turrets in the uh, screenshots and I thought those were pretty neat as well. That, uh, that it, This is not a modded ship, it does require some of the DLCs to be like this um, though the description does point out a few places where you could replace things and stuff if you didn't have them. Um, but it doesn't have any mods on it, so some of these turret designs and stuff I thought were pretty cool. Um, particularly like this, I'm going to assume that, uh-huh, we've got a rotor here that then probably goes to a small grid, which then you're using the conveyor to use these three small ports on the side for the Gatling turrets, or Gatling guns. And then we got a camera, and that also will keep it being able to go this way and spin since it's on a rotor so that's a fairly cool but simple design it's like it's not really it wouldn't really be that hard to replicate but it's actually pretty effective and it looks really neat so there's that um, but yeah I like stuff like that about this ship I also like the overall appeal it's kind of clean and sleek it's got that no nonsense but still pretty cool kind of vibe about it um, although I, I will say that the new the new DLC that adds the lettering is a nice touch. Obviously, we've had mod, mods for that for a long time, but I do think it's kind of cool that you can do it in vanilla now, and it does add a, a nice layer of polish to ships at this point. Um, let's see. There is also this ladder here, which is an interesting concoction. I'm going to say that this button here will extend that ladder. Uh -huh. And so again, we're seeing a yet another example of, I really like how um, how well the, tr the grid transitions have gotten because it's like, I'm trying to actually figure out where 
Okay, there it is. I was going to say, I'm trying to figure out where this is all mounted to. So we've got the rotor there, but this small row of half blocks, and then I'm guessing this ladder is connected to the half blocks, but it's lined up almost perfectly with the catwalk. At a glance, you'd never know. And then you've got this cool little hinge on the back. This is a nice little trick, actually. Um, this hinge on the back with a block and then a further extended ladder. That's kind of cool. I really like that. Um, so that would be, I'm assuming, your ground entrance that you could um, extend that out and then you can reach the ground and kind of fold it up if you don't want anybody getting in your ship. Um, chin turret magazine. Oh, that's cool. Actually have an access point. Um, one thing I will point out, what am I, what am I floating over here? <laughs> There's nothing there, stupid mag boots. Um, one of the things that I will point out about this ship, just for a context clue, if you will, is, um, ooh, doesn't look like we have gravity. That's interesting. Um, uh, it was originally designed by the builder as a kind of all-purpose survival type ship, and then kind of grew into uh, various different other tasks that needed to be accomplished. So, um, why am I, why am I bouncing over all of these blocks? Oh, you know what? I bet you that's a byproduct of their change to collision boxes in the last update. They changed the collision boxes and I'm gonna bet, I bet money on that, that that collision box changed how the mag boots are detecting edges. Well, that's not gonna be annoying at all. <laughs> um, so, I'm just going to see if I can fly around through here. <laughs> I'm so over these mag boots flipping me everywhere. Um, but yeah, so I do think it's kind of cool in terms of a ship like that, that you have access to the magazines for the chin turrets and stuff like that, that it's like probably actually needed to have access to them because it was a, uh, it started as a survival ship. So you actually needed to be able to reload um, the stuff. And I don't know how this works. Well, I guess like that. I was going to say, I can't seem to get around that rail. It's, it's a cool look, but in terms of just moving around the ship, that's a little bit of a hindrance, I would say. And then we've got a reactor there. Um, I'm thinking it's not an exorbitant interior by the looks of things. I wasn't sure about down there, but I don't see any access points to that. So I'm guessing what we're seeing kind of is the interior. Um, and it probably is, the rest of it is probably all mechanical and function type stuff. So let's go ahead and grab this. I do like this look. Obviously, um, this is another one of those if you don't have the DLC that you can't get the transparent LCDs, I believe. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure. Um, but I do like this look. You still get the glass, but then you can kind of do HUD overlays and stuff like the the mass and the cargo and all that kind of stuff. Really nice touch. Definitely like that. Um, Alright, so we've got... Wait, why am I not highlight? There we go. Um, okay, so VTR. Uh... Ver vertical thruster rotation, maybe? Forward and reverse? Let's go with that. Um, thruster hydro large, all, okay. And then ions, it does have ions atmospheres, which usually when I see all three is kind of a clue that the ship is expected to be able to transition um, atmospheres because why else would you need um, atmo thrusters? Um, I guess the one exception to that would be if you had some kind of, of uh, hauler ship that you could undock it from and there's a transition module, but most of the time if you see all three thrusters then usually you can assume that it can transition. Um, D start, D stop, not sure what those are for. Hinge spotlights on and spotlights there. Okay, I don't see anything else. So. Let's test these out. I'm, I'm guessing this is the rotation. So, the the uh, rear ones are already down. Whoop, 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 wrong, wrong way. So let's try this and see if I'm right. Aha, I actually got it right for once. That's cool, that's pretty cool. I like that. So with it this way, it's kind of what I would consider flight mode. Um, accelerates pretty darn quick. 
It almost has like side nacelles on it. It's, I like this little ship. It's a cool little ship. It really is. And it moves pretty good. It's, it's probably in... Corvette. Probably Corvette classification for, for movement speed. It's not, um, not quite uh, nimble enough for fighter, but maybe heavy fighter Corvette somewhere in there. Kind of in the frigate type thing. Eh, a little, little faster than a frigate in terms of how it turns. It's got a little bit more responsiveness there. Um, so obviously when you're here and then you're like that, if we, if we wanted to go vertical and take off from there, we can hit one and two and rotate the thrusters down. And now we have more of a VTOL situation where now you've got a lot of thrust in, in the upward direction. Again, probably super useful for um, either if the ship is fully loaded and it doesn't have enough lift in an atmosphere to keep itself up, or if it's trying to transition the atmosphere and break gravity, um, more thrust in one direction would probably be an, an added benefit for either of those situations, but you could definitely use it for, um, you know, now I've got a full cargo load and it's too heavy and I'm starting to sink, well you could switch the, uh, you could switch the thrusters and then that might negate it and you can hover. Um, I just now noticed the wheels. I don't know how I missed those. Uh, but I just now noticed that. That's I'm assuming doubling for like landing gear so you have a cushiony landing. Um, Alright, so let's see. We have cameras. I don't see... Oh, we've got designators. Okay, I was going to say I don't see a way to control the, um, the, the turrets. What are these I want to see? So hit... So four, are these the, wait, are these the same things? Start and stop, so what's four? Oh, decoys. Oh, that's cool. So it's a merge block with a decoy. And it's got a little lever. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. So it's a merge block, a welder, a projector. It builds the merge block and the decoy, separates the merge block and the little lever, like a pinball machine, just kicks the thing out. That's adorable and awesome. I mean, look at all the decoys. It's like chaff. It's like a, a, a jet launching its uh, countermeasures kind of thing. That's so cool. Okay, we can stop it. And then they just fold back up and it just, that's cool. I didn't even know that was there. That's really neat. Okay. Um, spotlights. Where are these? It says hinge spotlights. Okay, there's there's the spotlights on the nose there. So what does the hinge do? Oh, that's cool. It's like uh, so you could check on the ground and stuff like that. That's pretty neat. All right, cool, cool. So designators. All right, so we're using the interior turrets as a designator. It still fires. I'm assuming... See, that's another thing I've never quite been able to wrap my head around. I don't know... Like, I don't see... There it goes. I was going to say, I didn't see that firing. So it's within a certain range. It has to be... Within a certain range. That's cool, though. I like it. This is a, this has got a lot of different mechanical functions, um, so it's kind of deceptive, but I really like this ship. All right. But with that, I do think we've explored most of the bells and whistles that we're going to look at for this one. So we're going to wrap things up here. I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, leave a like, and I will see you all next time. Peace.